in another box. I'm gonna pull out right now. Inside this bag here has two sprues, identical sprues. Here's your bombs. Here's your 500 pound SAPs. Here's your oxygen bottles right here. Here's your bomb fins. So if you're gonna load this thing's got a full interior, everything. Everything, just like the monogram liber liberators got everything. Next is your engine nacelles and your fowler flaps. That's probably the bottom of your fowler flap. Here's your cowings. Here's where your superchargers go. Good lord. Here's some more interior parts. Look like turret assemblies. They are. And they got something back here. I don't know what it is. Looks like it's a very fragile part. They got tape on there. So I don't want to disturb that because I don't want to break that. That's probably why it's there. It's because it's so fragile. These are your sprues for your turret. I don't know what's your top. I think it's your top turret. Nope. It could be your front turret and back turret. Sprues. Another sprue. Here's your 50 caliber machine guns. They're about a good inch and three quarters. Looks like ammunition belts across here. These all to your turrets and everything. Here's your mud guard to your nose wheel. Here's your oleos for your nose wheel. Man, this thing is up to the top. Okay, this is the last sprue, guys, right here. Looks like got the cat. This goes over the bomb bay. I can tell by that because I went aboard the strawberry bitch. There's a catwalk where you walk, where you walk all the way from the aft end to the fuselage to the forward end. And that's how you enter the B24 at most times. Go through the bomb bay. It's a lot quicker than going through the nose wheel. Look at those massive doggone oleo struts. That's for your main undercarriage right here. Now, another box over here. Lord knows what's in it. Oh yeah, here's all your sprues. Oh, okay, your clear stuff. Okay, guys, here's your clear parts. Now, I'm gonna tell you. Oh my God. What can I take a close view at this? What's fogged in that? That's what needs to be painted. Was nice and shiny right here. You can see where it is he painted here and shiny here. Man, no man, how do you, masking would be easy in this thing. And I like it in this bubble wrap. They got them that bubble wrap, guys. For extra protection. Here's your undercarriage right here. These are sandwiched. Excuse me, guys. Here's your undercarriage right here. Hus reaching high when your when thing is focused low. Okay, this is your undercarriage right here. Of course, you get the big oleos going around that. I imagine these would be aftermarket too, pretty soon, like white metal parts. Here's some more clear sprues. Man, that cockpit's beautiful. My God. That's for your bombardier. Your bombardier transparency hits forward. These windows are fitting are good. Man alive, I tell you, this thing is low. Oh my God, look at the size of these tires. These tires. These tires are big, guys. Size of mini donuts. I've seen donuts that big before. 
That nose wheel looks like an oversized lifesaver. Got good tread for tires, guys. Very good tread. I imagine it'll be aftermarket tires for these too. Lastly, in the contents of the parts itself to make the model comes up now. These are these are vinyl, like rubber. These are ammunition belts. I imagine they're designed so you can bend them over. They're like the same material they use in treads of model tanks. That's the best way to describe this thing, the material they used. A real soft vinyl plastic. It's probably designed that way, like I said, so it'll conform over uh, compartments and everything. And they give you some PE too, guys. Not very much. You got your push rods right here for your engine cylinders. And I don't know what these are. These may go to your flap wells or something. I don't know. Wherever it is, it's, it'll come to view once I get the instructions out. I mean, I tell you guys, this thing is a beautiful airplane. I mean, these 132nd jobs, they're costly, yes. They're very costly, but doggone, you get your money's worth in the long run. So when you purchase something like this, you don't want to get too much in a hurry to build, guys. Because you want to invest as much of the time as possible into the cost of the thing. And these things are very expensive. Lastly, it's going to be the decals and the instructions. And we'll start out with decals first. Now, the decals will give you, man, I wish they wouldn't do that. Put scotch tape on the back of the decal sheet, they can, yeah, no harm done. Well, that was certain, guys, this airplane is very neatly packed. I'm going to save that tape and tape it back over. I don't want the decals ruined. Okay, here they are right here. Hobby Boss decals. They give you uh, one, two, three, four options. They got War Goddess. <laughs> My aching ass. That'd be a very nice one. War Goddess skin. Actually, is three guys. I'm sorry. Now, going my way. Got a nice looking penny girl right there. With a dress with the garters on. That'll stop anybody down the road, especially back in those days. And uh, very, very, very impressive, guys. This thing is a very beautiful airplane. The decals are beautiful. And there are more aftermarket decals as I speak. I know they are. And uh, they are, uh, they're probably being, probably. I know they got them out now because I saw them last night. So more or less, the, the color options of the decal sheet is more or less done on, uh, on the basis of aluminum ship and all the drab and neutral gray in the bottom. And uh, I might get cracking on this kit tonight, guys. This thing is really building, building me up. I got so many builds going on right now, and uh, it's winter time. Winter time hasn't even got started yet, and uh, this is going to be a good candidate for it too, along with my uh, USS Brooklyn. Okay, here's the instruction sheet. We can zoom in a little bit in this bad boy here. Okay, this little pamphlet they give you looks like a Trumper's instructions. 
booklet. Okay. When you open it up right here, as always, you get parts identification sprues here. If you're in doubt, don't know what those parts are, you look at them. They're not numerically numbered, but they just got the sprues right there you, you, can, uh, you can look at. The reference points, I guess. Okay, before we go any further, for the color schedule, it's optional. Most of it's all aluminum. Instead of using shiny, all can aluminum, if I, if I chose elect to paint this aluminum, I'm going to use an oxidized aluminum on there. Because like I say, they may come shiny out of the factory, but once they hit the war zone and out the elements, it's like a shiny penny. It'll, it'll stay shiny too long. So, they didn't spend no time spitting polishing these things. These things were designed to get in the air, to bomb the Third Reich, and get back home. They weren't fixed to go to no beauty contest. Now for museum quality. Depends on the commanding officer at the war front. He wants his B-24 spit and polish and shine. They all were spit, polish and shine, but most of them weren't. Like I said, they were designed for war, get in, get out. So it calls for all aluminum. You got your color schedule down here. It tells you any colors options here. It calls for um, Model Master, Vallejo, Acrylicin, uh, Mr. Hobby, and uh, Tamaya, Humbro Colors. They got all the numbers. It's all number system here on paints. So you can't go wrong to get the correct colors. When it comes to paints, it's going to cost you plenty of money. The best way to do is you're going to paint this thing a little bit. You can sell some aerosol cans, battle cans. Model Master. They work very well. Oh yeah, got the rest of the, uh, the color. Excuse me, guys, forgive me. I was getting too ahead of myself. Here's the other options here. This is in, in, the, in the color schedule of uh, olive drab with neutral gray. You got your squadron identification code on the fence, and this is called War Goddess. War Goddess was the only olive drab selection on this here kit. The other two are done in the color of aluminum. The finish is uh, depends on you fellas how you want to paint your aircraft. You want to do a glossy or anything like that and stuff or whatever you want to do. It's uh, it's all it's it's all there. Okay, the instructions. After we pass all the parts through right there, has the breakdowns of the uh, cockpit compartment right here. The color cutouts, everything. Set of numbers, it tells you the color. And assembly of the nose wheel. And the uh, instrument panel looks like it's photo etched too. Or it's clear plastic with a decal. I don't see no decal on the decal sheet. If it did, I'd bypass it. Well, very good detail this thing has. Very good. It's an amazing kit, guys. It really is. These 132nd scale giants are here. They're awesome. Okay, here goes, guys. More of the, of the assembly of the cockpit. It tells you how it goes and everything. How it's all assembled. Get your bomb rack, your catwalk, your bomb racks, everything. Look at that, guys. My God. 
In a way, I wish they would have had one fuselage side clear and one side solid. That would really be impressive. But here's those ammunition belts. You got to cut them to size and everything. It tells you 30 millimeters. It tells you how long they are. You got to cut them. Use a metric system. You ball turret assembly, everything. Jesus. Big, big, big. Everything about this airplane is huge. There's a wiring right there, wiring paneling. Oxygen bottles. Ammunition lockers. Closer to fuselage. Turret assemblies. There's a big massive wing spar. Before you close that fuselage up, that spar's got to go through there, guys, before you close it up. If you don't, you know what's going to happen. You're running into problems. Man, this thing's a strong airplane. This thing's any built, it's strong. That gives me an idea right there. If you guys want to display this thing, if you want to put it away, this thing would be just like my uh, Airfix 172nd scale. Uh, what year was it? Uh, the um, that four-engine job I had. The uh, gosh, I can't remember it. Um, The last one that Roy Shed would get. I can't figure what. My God. I'm going to have a senior moment here, guys, for a minute. But come to mind. Anyway, that wing will come off. Come, you can take that wing right here and slide that wing over that spar. It's pretty going to go like this for a model show or somewhere. If you want to store this tank, take the wings off and store them. And, um,. That's the same thing. That, 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 that's a healthy spar, right? Good spar. That wing will slide right over that spar right there. If you want to display it or, or uh, actually for storage, you can slip its wings off. The Shackleton, that's what it was. The Airfix Shackleton. How in the hell could I forget something like that? The Admiral Shackleton had that. Matter of fact, my Shackleton's in, in the Airfix box, the kit they came out of. I just pull the wings out like that, put the few saws there, and the wings right next to them. Same thing can be done here. So that gives me an idea right there how this thing is assembled. I think it's a good idea. Aha, said the blind man. I can see now. That's where those floater wedge parts came out of. They fit inside the catwalks of the bomb bay. Those other interior parts come here. They must fit for the uh, landing gear, I think. No, they're not. Might the landing gear wells. They, uh, they are. I was wondering where the wheel wells at. The thing is, but it was. That's right here. That's all together. Man, guys. Well. That completes the inbox of view of my Christmas present. And yours truly, you're going to probably be starting on this thing tonight. And uh, it seems to be it's going to be a, a very joyful kit to build. About a good three month kit, I think. Take your time on it, three months. I could probably do it in two. That's working every day on it. Now, if you see those tigers out there really get into it, they can have this thing done in about a week. But for two hundred and fifty dollars, taking my time. I want to get my money's worth out of this bad boy. Okay, guys. Um, I've been turning two all day yesterday. After uh, matter of fact, all today on my uh, USS Brooklyn. I've got all the pieces on the hull quickly done, so I have a video of that coming up probably by this Friday. And let uh, me. I gotta get. I gotta finish up that D7 